Okay, welcome, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Amanda Kelly Tang, Director of Engineering here at Alignable. We're excited to have you join this event on how to successfully hire and get hired in 2022 as part of Alignable's Small Business Solution Series. For those of you who have not attended a webinar in the past, this is an ongoing series where we bring in experts to provide solutions and expert insights in solving your most pressing business challenges. Our goal for this series is to educate you about the options you have so that ultimately you can make an informed decision based on what's best for you. We're going to explain why these companies found the need to innovate in this space, how they went about it, and what you can do if the solution meets your needs to learn more about it. Joining us today, we have Bianca Remmer, Senior Manager of Employer Insights at Indeed, to discuss how to set yourself up for success with hiring and getting hired in 2022. Finding the right employees was a challenge before COVID, but now it's even tougher. For many, the demand for workers significantly outweighs the supply. Business owners are using a wide variety of approaches for hiring, including word of mouth referrals, and job posting sites, but there are other options available as well. Today, we are going to cover the following. An Alignable member's unique success story with hiring, how candidates and employer expectations have changed, unique tips for standing out against the competition, what's the gig economy, and how you can benefit from tapping into it, need to know tips for success, being successful on a job site, and to wrap it up, we'll have a 20 minutes of Q&A to answer your most pressing questions. Now, before we begin, a few event guidelines for today. We've had over 1,500 people register for this session, so we might not get to everyone's questions. If you have any questions, please post them into the Q&A box, and we will take as many of them as we can. As a reminder, please don't post press please do not post personal information in the chat. If you have a specific question about the solution that we don't get to, we will also provide a link in the chat where you can find a link to contact Indeed directly at the bottom of the page. Throughout the presentation, when we mention different website links, you'll be able to find those in the chat. Of days after the presentation, you will receive an email with a link to the recording links to the resources we mentioned, along with the link to our Hiring Solutions Center, where you'll find all kinds of helpful information, groups to participate in on Alignable, and resources for the best hiring solutions. To kick off our event, it's important to note that successful hiring can stem from both leveraging your network as well as utilizing hiring-specific tools. Let's start by hearing from an Alignable member who just went through networking on Alignable and hired her perfect fee. And certified holistic health coach. Karen, how has Alignable helped you with hiring? It wasn't a planned thing. It happened when I was connecting with various women in the group and I built relationships with certain ones and happened to be this particular person who always asked me, what is it that you need me to do? And I would say that, and it was more like pro bono. So we built our relationship each week, seeing the different tasks that she would do for me. And she always knew what I was thinking and she always did the right thing. So being a part of a liable and not even knowing that the virtual manager that I needed and wanted was right there within the group happened to be that person. And I ended up bringing her on in August and we've been working and meshing together ever since. I think she's awesome. That's awesome. All right, now let's switch gears in welcoming Bianca Remmer from Indeed to talk about expert insights in tackling hiring. Hi, Bianca. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Indeed? Sure, hi, everybody. Um, first, I'll say I typically am not able to see where everyone's from um, when I do webinars. And to see that 69 of you have said hello from now 70, um, what looks like the entire US. So we have a great crowd. Thank you all for joining. I too am excited 
to be here today. Um, just a little bit about myself. I've been with Indeed for a little over five years. I lead um, a team of what we call evangelists here at Indeed. Um, it's called our employer insights team, which is part of the larger marketing org um, here in the US. And we go out and we work with our clients by partnering platform data with market insights, some thought leadership with the goal to ultimately help our partners and our clients hire faster. And prior to coming to Indeed, my whole career has been in the talent acquisition space, um, primarily in healthcare. And one of the reasons I, I joined Indeed is because our mission and our motto is we help people get jobs. If you've seen any of our commercials lately, we we really scream that and shout it out from the mountaintops. And that's just a passion of mine in general. And so uh, I love working here and I'm happy to be on this webinar today. And I was talking to Amanda earlier. I said, we have a lot to cover, but if you each leave with just one thing you can bring back to your business to hire better talent faster in this world that we're in right now, then we will have done our jobs. Or I will feel like I did my job today. So thanks for having me. We're really excited to have you. Um, to kick off the conversation, Bianca, can you start by helping us understand how candidate and employer expectations have changed over the past two years and how COVID has impacted these changes? Yeah, I think that's a great way to sort of kick this off. Um, recently, we've seen a lot of headlines. I'm sure you've seen you know, a lot of news out there about what we're calling sort of the great resignation and how the pandemic has really inspired a lot of people, and I'm sure there's some of us on the phone, to really rethink your ultimate relationship with work, you know, be it your job, your, you know, just the work you do, your career. But while, you know, that's undoubtedly very important, perhaps there's not been enough attention given to how it's also provided employers, so you all on the line, um, an opportunity to rethink how we hire. So I've been saying this on webinars and Zoom meetings throughout the last, I can't believe it's been two years now, um, how you were hiring in 2019 and then how you switched in 2020 when you know everything went down. You know, Last year when we thought we were coming out of this and into 2022, that should have changed, right? You have to be rethinking how you hire and this has really given us a chance to do that. Um, and so not to, you know, this has been a very tough time, but the, rather than view this moment, if you will, negatively, the way that Indeed has viewed it really is um, as an opportunity. And so we sort of renamed it the great realization instead of the great resignation, if you will. And um, while it's certainly a, you know, a challenging time to recruit, I'm sure we're all on this call because we wanna learn better ways to do that right now. I think it's an opportunity to really build better workplaces in the future overall. Um, you know, if the pandemic has inspired you to sort of rethink your priorities in life, you're not alone. I know, you know, I've been there a few times over the last couple of years, but you know, millions of people right now are, um, you know, choosing not to return to their pre-COVID jobs. That's just the reality. And I think a great, as we keep saying, great realization has really dawned on sort of the working world as a whole. Um, you know, people are realizing things like empathy and happiness in the workplace is possible. So one of the things Indeed has really done is, you know, doubled down on that. Um, over the last year, we've had a partnership with leading experts in the um, arenas of, you know, happiness and well-being. Um, one that we work with specifically is Dr. Jan Emanuel, who sort of wrote the book on worker well-being and, and what it truly means to be happy at work. Um, and we've created the world's largest ongoing study of work happiness um, to help really the working world better understand, measure, and discover happiness at work. So um, just, a few, just a few things that I think have changed and how we as employers should be thinking about the future of our workplaces. I think it's really amazing how you've uh, reframed that to be a positive change that we're going through. And um, yeah, so we can, uh, right? that's really exciting. Awesome. So Indeed has offered Alignable members a $200 sponsored credit for their job postings. Can you help the audience understand what credit on Indeed means? Yes. Um, yes. So let's, let me sort of um, 
break that apart and I can sort of explain and, or do my best job in you know a short time of just explaining. Before I do, I will say that when you go to use your credit, when you're on the site, if you scroll down, because it'll it, it's very simple. I mean, you, you could probably all figure out how to do it on your own. However, there are questions and I see some coming up in the Q&A right now that I'm sure have to do with this. There is a button that you can push to get information on who to call, who to email. Um, I'm not sure if those of you on the line have an aligned rep. I would think not if you're um, you know, on the small business side, but you can get one and you can, um, there's plenty of tutorials and, and, and ways to reach out. Um, but for time's sake, um, with, with Indeed on our site, you can post either a free job. So I'm sure many of you have, or you know that you can always post a job for free, or you can sponsor a job listing, which is what that credit will allow you to do. Um, Free listings are featured on Indeed Search. So um, if I'm a job seeker and I go in and I put that I want to be a, a, you know, a warehouse worker or a, a, a truck driver in Boston, you know, I'm going to put that what and that where, and those free jobs will come up um, and they can attract quick attention. But unfortunately, what happens, um, you know, they fall back in search as new jobs are added and we're adding thousands of jobs to the platform every day. The difference with sponsored jobs is that they retain their position for as long as the job is sponsored. So ultimately they're visible for a longer period of time and um, you know, to obviously more prospects, more candidates. It's also helpful to understand sort of how this all works. And that's why I said it's a, you know, I we can go into detail a much greater on the, you know, how relevancy plays a, a, a part, time plays a part you can request to speak to somebody again once you go on and you hit that button i believe it says you know learn more or something like that um and somebody can help you walk through the steps on how to do that but again our platform is pretty easy to self-serve um why sponsor a job i think maybe that was part of the question too um one for better visibility so as i mentioned sponsored jobs are going to appear longer than non-sponsored jobs on the search results because again time is a factor because we're adding so many jobs every day and our site is not you know, it's not a posting site, only it's an algorithm. Um, so there's a better chance that the right person is going to see and apply for your job if you sponsor it. The other part of this is something called instant match. So when you sponsor a job, it automatically unlocks the ability to instantly match you with um, job seekers that are, you know, um, and aligned with what's in your job posting. So it goes to work for you right away, really searching through, we have millions and millions of resumes on Indeed. So what it does is it pulls up candidates that fit your job description, and then you have the ability to invite as many of those candidates um, as you'd like to apply. So really what it does is help sort of represent a more proactive approach to, to hiring by sort of nudging job seekers. And even by doing that a little bit, they're more likely to apply. So does that, does that kind of help Amanda just yeah, sort of level set there as people are sort of opening their, their credits and asking themselves, how do I use this? Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Thank you. Um, so coming back to the changes that we've talked about um, that have been, been happening over the last couple of years, what are some of the unique tips that can help someone stand out against the competition as both an employee seeking to work and as an employer looking for top talent? Yeah, um, a lot of, well, we I've shared a lot of tips, I would say, over the last two years. Um, but let's sort of go broad and then I'll drill down. So mm -hmm. I think, as I mentioned, you know, we renamed the great resignation to the great realization. I also think the definition of what we would consider a good job over the last two years mm -hmm. has fundamentally, fundamentally been altered and changed. And so now you see companies offering work from home. A lot of companies have just changed how they operate altogether. If you're not able to offer work from home, because I know a lot of uh, smaller businesses, that's just not possible, depending on the skill set of the employee or you know what you need them to get done. I think flexibility is key, and taking that a step further, you know, really asking yourself what flexibility means for your business. Um, are you thinking about people who are parents and caregivers? Are you thinking about uh, people where you know, as long as they get the job done, do they really need to be there nine to five? Again, in the past, those are things that were non-negotiable, but right now, in order to be competitive, you really have to think about what your definition of a good job for the people you're trying to attract looks like. 
I secondly think about the ripple effect that resignations have had and how that can hinder your hiring plan. So to me, that means a focus on retention. Whether you have one employee, five or 500, I think you need to be thinking about how you're gonna keep them because you do all this work and you spend money to get them in the front door. But then a lot of times I think the, the you know, the, the onboarding process, what's happening in the first 30, 60 or 90 days, you know, with the, just because of the sheer volume of what we're all trying to do, retention is, is not something, especially on the smaller side of the house that we, we give enough thought to. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing I would say is standing apart from your competition, which might seem simple, but I think right now um, there's not enough attention being, being given to authenticity. Um, you know, in your job postings, what you have out online, are you being authentic? Are you showing what it really is like to work at your company? What makes you different from the, the job or the company down the street or who you, know, who you compete with? Fourth, I would say this is a huge opportunity just to think about you know, and ask yourself and your business the right questions. What is it like to work and hire better? Um, I think you know, taking it a step further in that sense, talking about you know, competing with the big guys, because I'm sure a lot of you on the line are saying, well, I can't compete with the Amazons or the Walmarts or the FedExes. Um, you know, even though it's, it's hard to sort of challenge big business when it comes to things like money, many of the small business owners that we talk to right now are doing just that by offering higher wages. I mean, I know that that's something we talk about a lot, but right now we, we, don't, we don't really you know, have a, have a choice. And so asking yourself and your, your colleagues and your companies, the right questions around that, you know, how, how do we do that? Right. Because I understand that that's not always easy. Um, let's say it's not in salary, right. You can't offer somebody a higher salary, taking that a step further. Um, you know, we know that it's one way that small and medium businesses are competing, but thinking about other things like open PTO policies, um, you know, do you offer, again, a flexible work schedule? Are you touting any sort of generous vacation policy? You know, things like that are other ways to compete that doesn't necessarily relate directly to salary, but overall, you know, compensation. Something else that I think small businesses have an advantage of, and, you know, I'm sure you all have this in your arsenal, is, you know, your size, right? So it's not easy to build a sense of community or you know, at, at work, but many job seekers today look are really looking for authentic human connections. And I think that a smaller business often results in a tighter knit group of people. And just as you all, I'm sure on the line, managing your businesses as business owners are wearing many hats, so do your employees. So you have a leg up or an opportunity to really allow them to do things like working on projects that might fall outside of their typical scope of work Right? A lot of people are looking for autonomy right now. And I know that there's a question about the gig economy coming up, which we'll talk a little bit more about this then. But you know, if you're giving people the ability to elevate their skills or level up you know, or, or you know, add to their skill set, I think that leads to a happier workforce, that leads to happier people. And then ultimately, you'll hear me talk a lot about brand, a better brand for your business, especially if you rely on things like referrals. Mm -hmm. Those are some amazing tips. I love your focus on authenticity and using the strengths of your business to make you stand out in creative ways. Yeah, it's so important right now. <laughs> awesome. So on the topic of Indeed, one of the most powerful things about online per platforms is their ability to create incredible efficiencies by bringing lots of people together. The newest solution for hiring is the gig economy. Could you help us better understand what that is how small businesses can benefit from tapping into it and how Indeed has innovated in this space. Yes, um, I was thinking about this earlier and I thought back to when I was a recruiter, as I mentioned, my whole career has been in talent acquisition, but I started many, many moons ago as a recruiter, um, you know, running a desk, very much like, you know, you find the candidates, you have the job order and you had to kind of be the Jerry Maguire to make it work. Um, mm -hmm. We called it temp work back then right? Then I think fast forward a few years, it moved to, they were contractors. And then we moved from contractor to sort of a more sexy, you know, way to look at it, which is I'm a consultant or I'm a freelancer. And now it's gig work, right? And the good part about it is that it allows, you know, small, medium businesses to 
flex up or flex down or scale up or scale down based on your needs. And I think the big, the big difference with gig work versus the, you know, the other, um, the other words I just used is that now we've seen this rise in technology. That's sort of, for me, the, the, the difference and sort of the game changer. Mm -hmm. However, you know, we, we all know on the phone, you know, myself included, that technology can a lot of times be and feel um, clunky and cumbersome, which mm -hmm. can create, you know, a lot of friction for job seekers. And we, we can't risk that right now, again, because it is a candidate driven market. And if they can't figure out how to apply for a job, they're going to go to the next company and apply. It's, you know, easier there. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we've done at Indeed is we've um, tried to sort of solve that problem for both candidates and employers. That's not just job seekers that find, you know, technology to be a little bit cumbersome. We know that, you know, hiring managers do as well at times, mm -hmm. but we've tried to solve that problem for both sides of the house. And we've really been focused on automation. So automating that hiring process, however many steps it is for your business, you know, be it um, seeking out, you know, finding the candidate, writing the job ad, you know, how long it takes them to, uh, uh, um, you know, apply. Once they apply, how are you interviewing them? You know, everything is over Zoom or a lot of things are over Zoom or, you know, some sort of a platform now, um, you know, getting them, you know, walking them to the front door and then, you know, onboarding. Mm -hmm. um, and so we focused on automating the hiring process so that candidates can move through the funnel quickly and apply and interview for jobs. And so we actually have a tool called the Indeed Hiring Platform. Um, if you want to learn more about it, again, when you go to use that credit, just request to speak to somebody and somebody can walk you through what that looks like. Um, this is a really, you know, this is really important in the gig economy, again, where candidates are finding short-term flexible work or contracts, and they have a lot of options. So they'll work with the companies, again, as I mentioned, who have the easier and the quicker application processes. And again, any of us who have applied for a job in the last you know, handful of years know that you know, a, an application process with you know, 20 steps is you know, a recipe for you to go and look at the next, at the next job. The second solution we have in place, um, which will probably be a little, maybe just better for some of the folks on the line, um, is called, it's a little newer, it's called Indeed Flex. And it allows for job seekers to really work where they want, when they want. And it gives them instant access to jobs. They can view options that meet their needs um, or that you know, suits their particular lifestyle right now. When we really think about this sort of gig work, as I mentioned before, um, they can view pay rates. They can filter to see which employers meet their pay preferences. And it allows you all on the line or you know, employers to fill openings and any available shifts that you might have with vetted out highly skilled workers in with literally one click of a button. Again, so if you're interested in that, I'm, you know, I could continue to talk about it. Um, I would go on and um, click to learn more and you can jump on the phone with somebody or do a Zoom and they can uh, show you what that looks like. Yeah, and I did notice some people are asking about the links and we will be posting and sending out the links to all of these tools that Bianca is talking about um, yeah. after the event. Sure thing. Awesome. So we've covered a lot about the hiring economy. Now let's dive into job posting sites specifically. We can pull, we, we ran a poll on Alignable members um, and Indeed was ranked as the number one most effective job posting site for small business owners. Can you help us better understand the benefit of using a job posting site like Indeed and how you can be the most successful successful for getting hired or hiring via Indeed? Yes. I mean, not that I'm biased or anything, but I love that we were, you know, we came out number one in your, in your survey. Um, so the benefit, you know, look, we are the number one, you know, job, job site, job search site in the world. Um, you know, we're number one in the space. So that's great. You know, we have 250 million unique visitors that come to our site every single month. That is a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure many of you know that we have a partnership now with Glassdoor. So with Indeed and our, you know, our partner site Glassdoor, we reach um, 82, I think it's now 82% of all job seekers. That's not just, you know, one industry or that's all job seekers. Mm -hmm. um, I think in regards to standing out on our site, again, because you are competing with a lot of big businesses, you're competing with, you know, businesses in your same industry or sector. It's all about being relevant. Um, I think being relevant to what job seekers do a search and see, you know, when job seekers do a search and see your title, you want to make sure it resonates with them. At Indeed, we say content is king, 
right? So think about it. You go to the, you go to Indeed, you type the what and the where if you're a job seeker, and you're going to pull up whatever relevant results are, are, are matched to your search. You want your content and your job ad to, to be as relevant as possible. You don't want it to be spammy. You want to spend time on that job description. And I've said this before many times over the last two years, the job description that you had online, be it Indeed or anywhere, you know, in 2019 or even 2020, shouldn't be the job description you have right now. It is a different candidate pool. It is a different market. And again, you want to you wanna shout from the mountaintops anything you're doing different from your competition. So again, I think relevancy is probably my big, would be my biggest tip. Um, you know, it's not about educating candidates right now on the specific role, but the why, why the role, right? They know what they want to do. You know what you need them to do, but why your company, why your job versus the competitor down the street? Um, mm -hmm. I also think that you need to just educate them on things like compensation. A lot of, you know, customers will say, oh, I don't want to put that in there because, you know, Joe down the hall has the same job and he might, you, you know, you, I think people are underestimating how important that is right now. Um, things like location. A lot of companies have, you know, people bouncing around from location to location. In order to post a relevant job on Indeed, you need to tell the candidates or the job seekers rather where the job is. I can't tell you how many times people leave that off and your job will not pull up in the, in the search results when that candidate goes to look. Um, diving in a little bit deeper, um, in particular, the majority of job searches today are taking place on mobile devices. And that's, that's not, nothing new. I mean, that's been happening for a while, but I think optimizing your listings for the mobile experience is also an essential step. Um, another reason, you know, aside from mobile to expand beyond like traditional recruiting methods is that much of the decision making process is directly to what job seekers can find, you know, online, whether that's mobile or on a desktop. So things like company reviews. Um, and if you don't know where to find that, we can talk a little bit more, but those are on your company page. And if you have jobs posted on Indeed, mostly all of you on this line will have a company page. Um, if you don't know who's managing it, um, again, when you click to learn more, we can find that out for you. But company reviews influence where job seekers apply. They show a company's reputation, which we know significantly impacts their final decision to accept a job offer. Um, and then just overall, I think establishing an online presence is just a key you know, to attracting talent. Um, again, you get a company page for free if you have jobs posted on Indeed but you really wanna use that to engage potential candidates and really enhance your employer brand, which, you know, whether it's Indeed's webinar or another webinar, you're hearing about branding. I mean, that's so important right now, your employer brand. So a little long-winded of an answer, but those were my, those are my tips. Those are some excellent tips. I, I love the fact that you're focused as one of them was on mobile because when you're creating your job on a desktop, Typically, you're not really thinking about the fact that it, a lot of people are, are looking at those on mobile. Yeah, well, like little things like we say, like if you go onto your phone and you pull up your job, I mean, you should do that, right? Like if you post it, the, go take the journey as though you were the job seeker. And if you have to do things like pinch, pinch and Zoom or you're swiping and swiping and swiping, again, it goes back to that lengthy application process. How many people are going to do that or say, this is too cumbersome. When I was on it, you know, the next job looked just as good. I'm going to go. I mean, little things like that people don't realize makes such a huge difference, especially now. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, these are some really great insights, Bianca. To everyone attending, we hope that everyone has found some value in the innovations in small business hiring market. There's a really, um, there are a lot of questions in our um our Q&A section that have come through. So let's spend a few minutes answering some of these. Also a reminder, if we're unable to answer your question, please see the chat box to find where to ask your question after. All right. So we have um, uh, Paul. Uh, I've posted on so many job posting sites to hire part-time gigs for my construction company. Why is Indeed better? Well, again, as I mentioned, I think just having that 250 million, you know, job seekers coming to our platform every, every month, um, you know, that's a pretty big number, not to geek out on data, but, you know, I look at our numbers every, every month and that number just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, I think that Indeed is extremely easy to use. We really focus on the fact that we are 
simple, fast, you know, uh, you know, comprehensive. I mean, um, the other thing is, is different from job posting sites. We are an algorithm, as I mentioned. So, you know, as long as your job description, you know, is it has the the right stuff in it, right, and your job titles are not spammy, and you're just saying what the job is, where it's at, and and what you can offer. Um, your job's going to be shown to the right candidates. And as I mentioned, when you go on, the minute you post a job and you sponsor it, you're going to um, trigger that instant match. So then Indeed goes to work for you and says, hey, these people might be, these people might be a good fit. Do you want to invite them to apply? So I just think that we have just a more comprehensive view on the job market right now. We have a wealth of job seekers. And again, you're not going to get charged anything until somebody clicks on the job. That's the other thing. It's not like you're paying $300 to post a job. And then once the month is over, you lose that $300 without finding anybody. You're only pulling from that bank of money, if you will, when somebody clicks. And so I think your, your dollars can last you a little bit longer. Um, if you're comparing, I don't know what other sites you posted on, but um, just a friendlier system as well. Awesome. All right, our next question is from Linda. Is there an expiration of the $200 sponsored credit? I actually don't know that. Um, we can probably ask Bailey. I, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't think so, but let's let's find out. Let's take that and we'll we'll come back to you. All right, awesome. Uh, then the next question is from Monica. Bianca, can you clarify what you mean when you say not to make the content spammable? Do you have any tips? Yes, hi Monica. Um, yes, and I actually saw your question in the chat. I was hoping you would ask that, Amanda. Um, so we we think spammy job descriptions. Um, I would encourage you to go um, onto Indeed if you know after this if you want to jump on, and you'll notice that you don't see anything that says. Um, uh, let me give you. I saw one the other day. You know. Um, Hiring now, bonus, 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 exclamation point, exclamation point, come work for us in the title. The titles are very clean, very simple. Again, the what, the where, what do you want, what would you see on a business card is what we typically would say. Um, not only the title, but in the job description. Again, what are you looking for this person to do? What makes you stand out from the competition? We often will say in the first paragraph, so the same amount of time you give a resume before you realize that person is good for your company or not, Job seekers are giving your job description about that same amount of time, which is about five to six seconds. So in the first three pair, or I'm sorry, the first three sentences of your sort of about section, not for nothing, candidates don't care that your company was founded in 1905 by somebody's uncle. They want to know exactly what that job is. And again, what makes it different from the competition? So I think, you know, anything you would consider spam, we would consider spam. Again, um, you know, and just keeping it as clear cut and dry as you possibly can to, you know, hook as many people as you can that are relevant and qualified. Right. Great tips. Um, Arnold is asked, I'm a gig worker. Where can I find the best opportunities at Indeed? Uh, were we thinking at Indeed, like to work for Indeed or on in, like on the site? Uh, Let's uh, let's 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 go with um, on the site, and then maybe we can, yes, on the site. I would say I would say indeed uh, flex, and if you'd like, I can send you more information on that. As I mentioned, that is truly where I mean you can go to indeed just you know in general, but I think that if you're looking for gig work where you're going to pick up a shift and then you're going to bounce around and then you're you know you're going to think about. Um, you know, if it's Uber or, you know, whatever else, I think that you, that would be where I would start my, my search. Nice. All right. So the next question is um, from one of our top members on Alignable, um, asking uh, from Mario, asking how prevalent is ageism for, for job seekers? I don't mean older people lacking skills. I mean, highly skilled applicants over 50 not receiving offers. And what advice do you have for the 50 plus crowd? Yeah, unfortunately, I would say that, you know, one of the biggest topics that I've been speaking on, um, you know, lately, but over the last, I mean, at, you know, my career here at Indeed is diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, I think that, you know, we, we try to educate our clients as much as possible on, you know, what that really means. 
you know, we try to educate recruiters. Uh, so, so is it prevalent? I, I, yeah, yes. Um, and we do our best to educate as many people as we can and to really have the dialogue and, and start the conversation. I think a lot of people like anything that falls into the diversity inclusion belonging space can be, a, it can feel daunting to talk about it. And people don't like to ask questions and people don't like to have that dialogue because it can feel a little scary. But the more you talk about it, you know, the better we will become and, you know, the faster, you know, we won't have to hopefully think about these sorts of things in our hiring practices anymore. Um, you know, we urge recruiters to think outside the box. You know, if you keep recruiting in the same places you've always recruited or only relying on referrals, you know, of people that are like you, that look like you, that, you know, went to the same school as you, you're going to keep hiring the same type of talent. And we're, you know, we're, we're, we're back, you know, to this, this problem. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that answers the question, but yes, it's something that's prevalent. It's something that we talk about a lot. Um, and I think like anybody with a resume, again, you're going to want to make sure that you have the most relevant skills. You want to make sure that, um, you know, you're, you're um, really thinking about what it is you want to do, similar to the advice that I gave employers at the beginning of the call. What does the right job look like for you now? What does work look like for you now? What kind of flexibility are you looking for, if any? Um, you know, what skill sets do you possess? Um, I think, you know, um, it shouldn't be any I hope in the future it's not any more difficult for somebody over the age of 50 to find a job as it is, you know, anyone else. And again, our job at Indeed is to educate the employers out there who are hiring candidates and, and really give them tips to um, hopefully take that, what we like to consider unconscious bias um, out of mm -hmm. their hiring practices. That's so important is just recognizing that having diversity and inclusion in your teams and your hiring practices is, is going to be hugely impactful to your business and how to challenge them to do that. That's really great tips, Bianca. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for the question, Mario. Um, so the next question has been asked by a lot of attendees um, and this uh, phrasing of it's coming from Iris. What is indeed doing to curb the issues with spammers hitting applicants? How can we prevent this from happening on Indeed? spammers hitting applicants. So one thing I would say is we have a very um, robust search quality team that is on our site every minute of the day. We actually are not even allowed. They sit in the hills of Texas somewhere. They're engineered. We don't, I don't even know. We're not even allowed to talk to them because they are solely focused on, you know, looking at the site making sure you know that they're that they're unbiased right like i can't talk to them about my clients i can't talk to them about job seekers they are mm -hmm. looking at the site every single day to make sure that nothing spammy gets through now is is it a perfect process they are people so um you know no they do things slip through yes are they eventually caught hopefully um when you say spammers i'm assuming people reaching out to candidates and maybe they don't have relevant jobs or something of that sort i mean there are a list of criteria that you have to meet in order to even post a job on indeed so mm -hmm. there has to be an actual job um it has to have us you know it can't be um and i think somebody asked this it can't be commission only it has to be a job that you are paying somebody for um it has to be you know it has to have a set location um and again it can't just be you know uh, a commission only, or, you know, um, uh, if you, if you go to this school or you take schooling with us, we'll offer you a job or classes with us and get a certificate. We'll offer you a job after anything like that, that gets, that gets flagged right away. Things that slip through the cracks. Um, I can't think of any examples right now, because again, we try not to let that happen, but again, we have a, a pretty big team that works on that, um, minute by minute. So I apologize if that's something you're finding. I'd love to learn more though. Um, again, because whereas, Internally, the search quality team is very separate. So in order for them to do their job correctly, um, I can, you know, escalate that if it's something that's happening and you have a specific example, perhaps somewhere else in the business. So uh, feel free to email me or um, shoot me a message on LinkedIn mm -hmm. if it's affecting your jobs, uh, of course, as well. Or you think it is. <laughs> awesome. All right. So the next question is from Terry. Can you recommend preferable resume formats to align with Indeed's search engines? Can you say that one more time? Sorry. Can you recommend um, resume formats that would align with Indeed's search engines? Um, because resume formats that. 
Uh, I don't know that I fully understand. I think um, you mean, oh, you mean formats, um, as I mentioned before, just making sure that your resume is, you know, as easily just, you know, readable, similar to a job description. You want to make sure that you're catching a job, an employer's eye within that first five to six seconds. I think um, I'd be happy to take that offline. Yeah. I mean, I think so. Um, as I mentioned, I have a team of what we call evangelists that go out and help job seekers and companies hire better talent faster. And we also have a job seeker team. And so we do resume trainings and things of that sort. So I'd be happy if you'd like to give them my information, Amanda. Um, mm -hmm. I think somebody is taking either screenshots of the chat and the Q&A, or we're going to be able to look at the questions after, um, just grab their name and I'm happy to help them out. Okay. Yeah, I think this one is getting at the bots that would tell them what jobs are available based on what they put in their resume and if there's anything they should format their resume like in order to optimize getting shown to job seeker or job posters in the right way okay yeah we can i think that's um, a longer discussion and we can actually do like a screen share or something like that where i could be a little bit more hands-on um just for the spirit of time it's a great question though so again yeah if you could share my information that's fine awesome all right um so Jim and Donna have asked, as a veteran owned business, can I focus on hiring veterans? Yes, Indeed actually has a very, um, I'll use the word robust again program. And we actually just hired somebody to solely focus on this on the marketing team that um, falls under our umbrella and that's Indeed for veterans. Um, and so I would say that um, her name is Tina Almanchenko. And she heads that up just for, again, we have a much bigger program that, you know, Indeed as a whole focuses on, but um, Tina's a great resource and I'd be happy to link you up with her. Um, but, so the answer is yes. Awesome. All right, the next question comes from Vina. Does Indeed review or request updates of candidates' resumes? We receive resumes, but when we reach out to the candidate via Indeed, crickets, we tried phone, text, email next. So I'm wondering if these applicants are sent to us automatically, but the individual is not looking for a job. Any clarification would be great. Yeah, no, I think that that's something right now too that we're hearing a lot of. I think people, A, are moving very quickly. Um, I think, you know, people apply, you know, think back to when you were looking for a job, you apply to five or 10 and then, you know, something, you know, you take the first bite or the second bite you're probably not going you know, to reply if you get another um, reach out once you take a job. If that's not happening, the second thing is, or to answer the first part of your question rather, um, we, don't, we don't have candidates update. We, once a resume is on Indeed, we don't take it down. We don't you know, ask them to update it. We let candidates sort of you know, manage their own, their own journey um, in that way. Um, we like to say we put the job seeker first and we're focused on the candidates. And so we let them you know, manage their, their resume. I, I, I will say that when you search on the resume database, or if you're using Instant Match or any of our other products as part of our suite, um, you should be getting the most um, relevant resume and the most up to date. So when you're in the resume function and you're searching, um, you can limit it to the uh, most recent date range so that you're not getting resumes that are you know a bit older. So there could be two things going on: either that's not happening, or you are. Um, finding candidates that probably applied and then either took another job or, you know, are being unresponsive for another reason. And unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do about that on our side. Um, but so it sounds like one of the best ways to, to avoid that is to respond right away. So they catch you first. Yeah. And like I said, even if, you know, you are, there are times where maybe you're reaching out to somebody who hasn't, you know, been on the site for a little while and that resume is maybe a bit outdated, but most of our tools and products, especially our resume database, does allow you to sort and filter so that you are getting the most recent resumes um, at the top of the list. Got it. Awesome. The next question is from Dan. Can we include our hiring video in a sponsor listing, sponsored listing? Um, you can include it on your company page. So when you um, sponsor a job or when you're, you know, I'm a job seeker and I click on your job, if you've been to the site, it's again, very simple, very clean. You're going to see as a job seeker, you know, the company, the job, the location, and a little bit of a blurb about the company underneath. But again, it's this big. Um, I would say, you know, over 80% of the time, candidates are clicking on that to learn more about your company. If they want to apply, they have the option to click and learn more about your company. That's going to take them to the company page where you're able to post um, a video. 
And I would suggest posting a video, especially right now. And the thing that wins people almost all the time is smiling faces. I know it sounds really um, easy, but even like food companies, or if we work with like fast food companies or food chains, um, a lot of times I'll you know be, be looking at their company page or doing a walkthrough and they like to put food like, you know, chopped onions <laughs> or like a burger. And I'm like, you know what wins? They know you do that. They know that if you're a restaurant that you're going to have food there, you need to have people smiling, like high-fiving, you know, we love working here. So if you have a video that shows people having fun, I would recommend posting that. Awesome. That's some great advice. Yeah. Um, Jason has asked, is there a place in Indeed's analytics to see how many people actually go to your company page? Yep. If you go into employer tools, um, you should be able to, and this is, I would say um, you have to know who the owner of the company page is. So if it's you, Jason, you, sh um, you might already know how to do this, but if you go um, into employer tools, there is all your analytics in there. Um, if you're asking specifically like where to go in and you want someone to walk you through sort of how to look at those tools and the different options, Again, you'll get my information after this. Feel free to reach out to me and we can do a Zoom share and I'll show you where to find that. Awesome. All right, Clara has asked, what is the best way to be hired as an assistant or hire for an assistant to an entrepreneur who is currently only online? Can you read that one more time? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a little. Um, what is the best way to be hired as an assistant or hire for an assistant to an entrepreneur who is currently only online. So maybe we start with that. What's the best way to be hired as an assistant? I would say like anything else, I think that making sure, I'm assuming this is the, this is the employer and not the job seeker or the person hiring the assistant. I would say like anything, making sure that you are being really specific in what you're posting out there. So to me, an assistant, could, could, could be multiple things, right? Like, is it an executive assistant? Is it an assistant to the only, you know, if you're, if you're the, the owner of the company um, or an assistant to an entrepreneur is that, I think now I'm thinking about the question, if you're an entrepreneur yeah. and you need an assistant, I would spell that out very clearly in the job description, what mm -hmm. it is you want them to do. Is there growth opportunities? Is there something that, you know, in the first year they're going to get a bonus, um, you know, a, a bonus based off of the profitability or, you know, whatever metrics you want to throw out there. I feel like really late. And the fact that this is a unique opportunity, it sounds like, again, you're not looking for an assistant. Um, I, you know, we, I live in New York, so, you know, executive assistants are everywhere, but again, their jobs differ depending on what the day-to-day -day is. Some of them double as nannies, you know, and mm -hmm. they, you know, they're, they're doing everything from, you know, the errands personally for the person, some of them sit at a desk. And so I feel like that's where you have a leg up where if your job is very unique and gonna offer somebody that wants to be an, an executive assistant someday, um, yeah. I, would, I would really you know, hang your hat on that. I think that that's where you can get creative in your job ads and um, really stand out from the competition. Great. Yeah, that's, that's some great advice. And it looks like Clara might be really trying to approach that from both sides. So I think that's a good answer. Yeah, um, so Alignable is also a really great place, um, a resource for people looking for assistance um, through using connections, groups, networking, um, in your referral network in general. Uh, so just to kind of put that out there as well for all of the uh, business owners here. Um, all right, so we have another question um, from an anonymous um, member. Does Indeed have any resources to help me better prepare for interviews? I've been asked all sorts of situational questions and I'm out of the interviewing game. Um, we have a job seeker side of the house um, that yes, I, I'm not, I don't sit on that side. So I don't, um, I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what the resources look like, but yes. So I'm on the, the side of the house that speaks with our clients um, and, and our partners on that, you know, just as it relates to, you know, businesses and, and different verticals and industries, but we do have a whole side of the house that works with um, job seekers. And so I can find out for you what kind of resources we have. And again, another one, if we're collecting everybody's information, um, somebody on the back end, if you just want to make a note of who that was, um, I would love to link you up with somebody because yes, absolutely. I think that that's something that we can help you with. And, um, you know, it's not easy right now. So, the, you know, the, anything we can do to help. 
Awesome. Yeah, anonymous. If you want to repost Q and A. Oh, if you do want to, if you do want to follow up with Bianca, if you want to put in the Q and A your name and contact information, we can have her reach out to give you more information about that. Awesome. Um, Richie has asked, what are the expectations now for a working environment? Hybrid arrangements, going totally mobile, are and are people more collaborative now in most environments than they were before COVID? Um, I would say that it depends on the company, just to answer the first part of that question. Um, mm -hmm. But back to what I said earlier, I think that, or the question that you had asked me earlier about working arrangements, you know, I can just speak for Indeed, you know, right now, um, halfway through COVID, our company sent out a survey. And again, we really wanted people to feel comfortable about returning to work whenever that might be. We know that people spend a lot of time sort of rebuilding their lives, be it that around, you know, childcare or, you know, being the only working parent or whatever that might look like. And so we wanted to give people the opportunity to feel safe, both physically and also psychologically. So we had three options. It was, do you want to work flexible, which is, you know, you pick a couple of days a week to come into the office, but you know, whether that's two or three or whatever that is, fully remote or fully in an office, because we also realized for some people working at home with your spouse for two years in the other room has, you know, caused some major waves. So maybe you want to get back to an office. Um, so um, people sent in the survey. We were very mindful about, you know, giving people their, you know, the first, their first choice. Unfortunately, there are some jobs where, and this is where I said earlier, people are really rethinking what work is to them and, you know, what's important to them and what a job truly means because there are some jobs that are required to be in an office. And I'm sure that most of you on the line here, you know, you know, if you're the owner of a small business or working for a small business, some jobs just have to be done in person. But that's where we do see people in those industries saying, you know what, I can make a dollar more an hour down the street and I have a broad skill set, so I'm gonna go do that and I can get, you know, I can have flexible hours. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to really think about your specific company what that means for you and what ultimately can you offer in order to make people feel safe. So there's really no set answer. I think it depends on the company, the company size, the industry, um, and you know you have to do what's right for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, Renee Sullivan has asked, I am a hiring strategist for the trades industry. I use Indeed often to assist my clients in recruiting. However, my Indeed account was recently suspended. Who should I talk to so that I can be reinstated? Yep. So you remember I remember I mentioned we have that search quality team that sort of looks to make sure that there's no and a lot look, I'll be honest, a lot of companies or people do this unintentionally because maybe they posted a job multiple times and you know, and I'm not saying this is you, Renee, but um you know, there wasn't a location or it was too spammy in the eyes of, of uh, search quality. Again, we have no control over that. And that's where I said, we not, I, I wouldn't even be able to contact them and say, hey, you know, what's going on? However, you can, you can. And so if you go onto the site, there is a location on there that says, you know, I think it's like contact us or I, I there's going to be an FAQ and you can see your issue and under your issue, it'll give you a name and a number to contact somebody to figure out what's going on. And again, Amanda, when we sent out when we send out the link to use the credit, perhaps I can mm -hmm. I can give them um, so they don't have to go looking for it on the site, even though it is easy to find. But we can um, send a couple links for issues like that as well. Great, makes sense. Absolutely. Great. Thanks for the question, Renee. Um, the next question is from Barry. Um, Bianca, what would you recommend as unique recruiting strategies to stand out? unique recruiting strategies. Um, well, I think that right now, again, you have to be, it's a super competitive market out there. I think you really need to take inventory of what it is your business is doing that is different from your competition. I think now is the time to double as a researcher. So going out there, looking at who you think your top three competitors are, I don't know what industry or business you're in, but um, if there's competition local, what are they doing? because that's what job seekers are, are looking at. You know, what are they offering? Can you offer something that, that they aren't? Um, I think looking in places historically that you haven't looked at, maybe exploring meaning when you're in the resume database or you're on Indeed, 
you know, maybe in the past, I don't know if this is, you know, new or if you've been recruiting for a while or what kind of recs you have open, but I think that um, rethinking what it is you're looking for in a candidate. So if before something was required, even something like a degree, um, here at Indeed, we've, we've rethought how we hire and who we hire. There's a lot of jobs now that we hire in for where you don't need a degree. Um, mm -hmm. You know, go back and I'll, I'll call them the non-negotiables. Are they truly non-negotiables for a job seeker or are they things that perhaps now in the world we live in, you might be able to negotiate on? Um, I think for me, even as a previous recruiter, if I wasn't working at Indeed, those would be things that I'm doing. I also think thinking about how lengthy your hiring process is or what, what goes on when you're trying to pull people into your front door, you know, short, shortening that. And then finally, as I mentioned, I don't think we pay enough attention to what we call the onboarding time frame. So when somebody finally gets the job, how are you planning to keep them there in a very candidate-driven market? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good to, to think about not just getting somebody in the door, but how to keep them. So it's a really good reminder. Um, Can I the next interrupt you, Amanda? I am yeah. looking at just the first couple sentences of a lot of the chats that are coming in, and I do see people asking for help with resume. So um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want that just to kind of go by the wayside. I want to make sure that we're getting anybody that needs help with that tool. We have um, people on my team do weekly um, or weekly and monthly, depending on the industry or in webinars on exactly that, like walk you through step by step um, how to get the biggest bang for your buck and how to really, you know, use that resume database so that you're finding the right candidates. Um, if we can make sure that the people that are asking that have access um, or we have access to their email, I'll make sure that I send them some information on how to um, either register or link up with somebody at Indeed because I want to make sure that they are feeling like, uh, you know, they're getting what they need. Yep. Okay, so I see emails in here if we could collect those. Yep. Awesome. All right. So uh, it looks like we have time for one more question. And this one is from Paula. Can you clarify where my sponsored job posting will sit again? Is it proven these types of thing postings are more successful with hiring? Uh, yeah, almost four four times more likely that you're going to have somebody apply uh, to your to your job. Um, again, the free listings are featured on Indeed Search along with the sponsored listings. With with free, free is going to sort of fall back in the search as new jobs are added, but sponsors, sponsored jobs are going to retain their position for as long as they're sponsored. So what I mean by that is, is every time, so you have that, that, that bank of money, right, that you have in there, and then you're only getting charged or we're only deducting money when somebody clicks on your job. So the more relevant your job is, the more times it's going to be shown. So again, if I am a nurse in Boston and your job is the most relevant nurse Boston job, it's going to be shown. And as candidates click, that, that's how you know, you're know you going to be charged. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the question. Um, can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah. Um, so clarify where the job posting will sit again. And then is it proven these types of postings are more successful with hiring? Yeah, and so where it sits, I think a lot of times too, a good reminder, we get asked, well, why is my job on page five or page six? It's important to, to know um, we are not Google and we're not Amazon. So people, I think when they think about looking for a pair of shoes, you know, they go to the first or second page, you know, and, and, and you typically don't go like six, seven pages deep in Google or, you know, Amazon, not to say anything bad about those companies, but it's just, there's a certain way of searching on those companies. And indeed, we study what job seekers do. We look to see, you know, is a nurse, I keep saying nurse in Boston or whatever it is, where are they typically clicking? Where are their eyeballs typically looking? And so candidates on average are going nine, 10 pages deep to look for a job. Where your job sits, again, depends on, you know, again, it's an algorithm and I don't even know all of the secret sauce, but if it's sponsored and it has relevant, you know, relevancy is key, so it's time, it's gonna be shown as many times as it needs to be shown to the most relevant job seekers searching for that job. Right. Um, I guess then secondly, just better visibility. You know, sponsored jobs appear for longer than non-sponsored jobs, as I mentioned, and there's a better chance you're going to get the right person. Again, four times, four times, four percent, four times more likely, sorry, to get somebody to apply to your job if it is sponsored. And then honestly, to that instant match, I mean, you can't, you can't beat that. So again, we have millions of resumes on Indeed. It's going to help pull up candidates that fit that job description. And then you can invite as many of those candidates you'd like to apply. So it's a more sort of proactive approach than just, you know, 
posting a free job, hoping that somebody applies. This is sort of giving those candidates a nudge. So again, right. kind of working, you know, alongside of you in tandem with you to find the right, the right job seekers. Awesome. Those are some excellent insights. Thank you for attending today, Bianca. We really appreciate you sharing your expert insight on the small business hiring solutions. Uh, to our members, thank you so much for attending this event. We hope you took away some valuable um, information from this conversation. If we were unable to get to your question today, you can post any of these small business hiring rela related questions in the hiring best practices group on Alignable, the link in the chat box. If you have any Indeed questions, you can contact Indeed directly via the provided link in the chat box. If you're interested in checking out Indeed for your hiring needs, they have generously offered Alignable 200 Alignable members $200 sponsored credit to get more visibility on your job postings. We've linked the offer in the chat box. Be on the lookout for future events as part of our Alignable Innovation Series. You can find the link in the chat for where these events will be located. As a reminder, we will auto add everyone in this group to Alignable's events group for future event updates and the hiring best practices group to learn from industry experts. Thanks again. and. Have a great rest of your week. And we'll Thanks see you everybody. all. Have a great weekend. Thank you.